in and have them just kind of learn how the previous lineup was playing. Yeah, I mean, that, what a test that is, right? Because if, if that comes out negatively, you know, responded to, if you say, actually, that didn't really hold up and that the system can't just be transferred and all the rest of it, puts a lot of doubts into your mind. But if it does work, then, I mean, then they've really crafted something special, haven't they? So, uh, well, too soon to say. I mean, even behind one game, we won't be able to tell. But a lot of open questions in that, uh, in that area. Good round from Plopsky. And, yeah, NIP off to a, to a decent start so far. But now comes trouble. In the form well, of at least in theory. Th yeah, the AK-47s are out on the board. We'll see if Astralis can put something together here. Still just the one kill on device for the entirety of the Astralis side. Three Famas and an M4. So at least for this one round early on, Astralis down by two, but they have the better buy coming into it. Yeah, they definitely do. Third round here. Slow down Snappy a little bit. Popsky still does walk into the grenade. Wanted to play up close in case anyone was going to try and jump over past the smoke. He probably would have had the advantage if someone had done that, but he's still quite far forward, and that's, I mean, that's something. He's got a teammate that I think is, has a flashbang. Hampers has got a flashbang primed. So if he calls for it, Popsky could, you know, be flashed into a fight. And I think it's coming right there, but Snappy's turned for it. I don't know if he was just walking back or if he actually somehow knew. Look at Device over towards Ivy. I can't believe he's, he's made it this deep. He's right at the end of Ivy looking around that smoke. A little bit of a spam battle as Twist has given up the angle. So three players at the back of Bomb Train. Magus now going to step up under the cover of smoke and covering fire from Device. But Twist has an easy win. Flashbang comes out deep and Device is fortunate he wasn't committed to the swing. Uh, Dupree knows that someone is in that corner, but... How do you actually get him without exposing your back to that bomb site? That's a bit of an issue. Are they going to flash their way into fight Yugi? Rez gets a second kill before he finally does go down. Actually, there's finally the death on Rez. It's going to be Dupree next in line. And now it's Yugi in a one versus two. He's got the AK, but he needs to isolate and find a fight really soon because there's only 25 seconds. And if it goes on a little while longer, then NIP could just start to hide from him. And now they probably should. 20 seconds. They know he has to get the bomb down on this bomb site, and it has to be soon. Yeah, that smoke isn't going to do anything. Both players, Plopsky's in CT con. 10 seconds now, and he's slow played this way too much. Not even really time to fake the plan. He's going to go down. What a great win for NIP. And they're able to salvage a couple of AK-47s right at the end. So a nice lead, a nice first gun round for ninjas, for the ninjas. And Astralis can't get a whole lot going. Still just four kills down the entire roster. Do you think, uh, do you think Device shooting his AK over towards um, Pop Dog was sort of a way to try and you know, fake the fact that Magus would have walked out, like no one would have expected it because he's still just shooting there. It seemed like that was the logic, but it didn't really work out. No, uh, yeah, I, I think it, I think it was a little bit of covering fire. I think maybe just trying to get lucky, might as well start doing something. And obviously, I think it just called more attention to that part of the map for Twist to be prepared from. Yeah, that was my concern. I think the well. one uh, there was an. There was one really cool opportunity that Astralis had when I th believe it was Dupree to push towards Old Hell. Actually, NIP's gaze kind of shifted, and they didn't have anyone watching for the cross-through sandwich. So there might have been, there might be a world in the future where that part of the outside bomb site is is wide open for the taking. Well, this is looking very easy. Some just, uh, just you know individual isolated kills coming out here in favor of NIP. They love it. No loss of uh, of players so far in this round for them. And I mean, their economy could use it as well. Let's not forget, they do want to build as much as they can while Astralis are on pistols. So flawless round. What more could you want? AWP on North? No, this is, a, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal start for NIP. Yeah, money built up. You have the op on knock. The op is going to be a device's hands as well. So both sides have that weapon to work with. I don't know. This is one of those questions we'll have to see. Does Astralis actually have, do these core three players of Device, Magus, and Dupree, do they have what it takes to kind of help these two new guys come in and actually make an impact in this game? Can they find a recipe without the cohesion that they've been so known for over the years? Yeah, that's a really big question. Uh, it's going to help a little bit with uh, Dupree getting an opening like that, but I don't know. I mean, I just... I'm willing to give it a, a, fair, a fair shot. I want to see if it works. I hope that it does, because, again, it would... 
It wouldn't, it wouldn't mean they had sort of gone somewhere in Counter-Strike that really no one ever has before. Um, and and it, that would make it fun all on its own. You could start to speculate about what else is possible if that, if the theory behind it works. Device taking down a kill there. Twist pushing forward. And Magus was waiting. That was kind of almost the whole point of this. But it doesn't work out. Twist oh. even finding another one. And now Rez stopping as they try and come out main. That is a big collapse here for Astralis. I, that's a big boy play from Twist. What a great push down Ivy and even holding the line before the retreat. One has been spotted in team mid, but Dupree's made it inside with the bomb. Two players coming back to handle this and they know. Now they have the idea. Twist can watch the, watch the cross. And back to the outer bombs that we go for Dupree. So Astralis bringing some trickery into this round, but I don't think it's even worked even a little bit. Dupree moving forward. He's making a lot of noise and a swing from Hampus as he's trying to put down the bomb. It'll even be a double kill. No issues. That's five in a row for NIP. Catching fire and just generally doing a very, very good job. Stopping Astralis from even getting the bomb plant here. Well, I mean, again, otherwise they would have definitely bought up into this round. Astralis, they could have put on so much pressure. Instead, they go for a bit of a half line. But even that bomb plant would have helped them out so much. Oh yeah, I, I, that would have helped in a, in a big way. Regardless, now this is a pretty pretty deep pit that's being dug at the moment. Deagles and two Tech Nines for the Astralis attack. Device saving for an AWP, what a double. With the help of a flashbang, and Nock is gonna stick around at this upper ramp. Peering towards the corner, and Snappy's gonna test it. Now Nock, does he wanna even get more aggressive? NIP's not making any mistakes. They're holding onto this just perfect. Not even going to be burned by that Molotov. It doesn't spread nearly far enough. We saw it in the last game where Get Right sort of got surprised. They will make a jump down and the Tech Nine will take care of Rez, but that might be all they do in this round. They picked up the AK. Snappy, be great if you could do some more damage again. Astralis need, need a larger output just all together. Yeah, but I mean, even Plopsky close up towards ladder room has all the information that they've backed away, that there's no one actually swinging out wide. So NIP still in no danger of being fooled by any of this. Twist is going to take the momentary silence to push into an advanced position. And Device with 4 HP is just there to be the information gatherer. Now Snappy knows, but he couldn't do anything about it. Six to nothing for NIP. With Twist at seven to one, Plopsky at six to one, Hampus is six to one. They have, they haven't really died almost at all yet. So yeah, just the baseline output has to be raised right now for Astralis. Some early kills and then you know some early conversions into wins as well. I mean they had one of those rounds where they got the early kills and then still couldn't really follow through, which again is not what we want to see or really are used to seeing. Oh, Dupree coming through the smoke. Advance behind another smoke, but oh, Nock is in a dangerous position. Gets the opening kill. Plopsky's close up as well, but he might not even get put into play. Nock is shutting things down. Double kill for him, one for Rez, and all the aggression, all the, all the initial attack from Astralis is gone. It's Device and Snappy far back, who's left to just kind of sit and wait. But it's a cool maze of grenades that Astralis have managed to put down out in the yard to try and get the pre out there. But the one opening that he could find Nork up against the, the long left-hand side there was perfect. And then the rest of Astralis just couldn't break through. There was nothing left. It's going to be device dropping with the AWP. No kills happening yet for the Danish side. And that means NIP are in such a powerful position. I mean, look at the money they'll have if they win this round flawlessly, and they will. Another one, 7-0 here, as Popsky will clean up another double for him as well. They are filthy rich. Man, this, I mean, you know, it's only seven rounds in to, to really my first glimpse of this, this Astralis with uh, two new players. But this is a shadow of what they used to be. There, there's, no, there's no danger in that previous attack. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm all right with you being early to this call, Jason. Some, you know someone else is going to be there anyway. Like, there's going to be... Well, there's going to be yeah. threats. I mean, you also know that... 
there's no way that they were gonna match, you know, the legendary run that the old, the older, the, like the, the the standard Astralis roster had, right? But I, you'd at least expect there to be some level of impact and some strength in this roster. And at the moment, we're seeing none of it. It's still zero kills on Magisk, who is the guy who's had to take over the reins from Glaive. So he was one of their best and most effective and scariest players. Now he's got zero kills. Snappy and Yugi, the two players stepping in, one kill apiece. I want you to, uh, I don't think they're going to do much this round. We'll, we'll snap out it if, if, if Astralis starts to get a lot of deal headshots here. But in the meantime, Jason, if you can, if I could get you to just close your eyes and, <laughs> and, try and try and imagine in your brain, just try and paint the picture of what does Duncan's face look like right now? And if you could just describe that to us, maybe <laughs> as you just close your eyes. And uh, he's got a real world beak face on his mouth, uh, uh, you know, that little <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> he's got a Santa Claus hat on. And <laughs> I don't know what else. He's wearing a complexity jersey right at the end with some lingerie. Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird image I have going on. Okay, that actually did get way off course. Somehow Astralis <laughs> are getting the kills. <laughs> but um, I don't know if it's going to be quite enough to win the round. Still 30 seconds. Device will take down Nork. Actually, now it's looking very doable. All of a sudden, Plopski in a one versus three. Oh, and it gets shut down. Magus with a big double kill. The Deagles turn it as we were uh, listening to your <laughs> fantasies. And now we're back in the ninth it's, round. It's classic. Uh, it's classic Counter Strike, isn't it? It's like it's it's Deagles. It's an 0 and 7 score line. It's a save round and a caster curse thrown in for good measure. And Astralis put their first round on the board. Yeah, you are right, indeed. It's how it's meant to be uh, working out. So stuff coming up over at the Blast Shop. You should go, go check that out, guys. And um, also, if you haven't seen it in some of the other matches, go go check out the fan cams. I think that's a really cool addition. Uh, we've had some good. Uh, some good people already uh, tuning into that, so um, go find it on social media. Uh, we've all retweeted it, so you should be able to find it. But seven to one scoreline right now. And you are a big fan of the pizza background. We've got custom backgrounds going on in these fan cams, so nothing can go wrong there. Pizza background was uh, was high high quality. I thought um, people. I'm sure people are going to get creative. There's going to be going to be you know people trying to. Trying to find up something new and exciting. Maybe if you have a strange hat, funny sunglasses, it's easy to impress us. Just go for it. Man, I can't believe they actually went right. around. They've got the AWP as well on device now. <laughs> well, let's see if they can do it with weapons. That'll be the real test. Rez, Plopski, and Nock all centered around the bomb train for the moment. Rez is going to push up towards E-Box and Twist playing out towards Ivy. Nock now rotating back in with the op to support Hampus. But Astralis still just spread across the map. A bit of a default. And, and the key with any kind of a default on the T side is to make sure you get box hall's control, which Device and Snappy have done. Yeah, and, and again, just leaving, what is that, Magus out at Ivy, just to keep an eye on things. If someone challenges him, maybe he could go for a bit of a fight, but he doesn't really have to. I, I think he's just there for presence. I don't imagine he's going to get very aggressive at all outside of spamming through a smoke, but you need to have him there to, to be some kind of a presence so that in the future, like, you still have you still have the NIP defense used to the fact that there's someone out towards IV. Rez came up from behind the stairs and the ladder, and he takes two people down. So that whole default that was just being set up, it was just about to unfold through main, it is gone. The whole game is up. They know what's coming now. 5 on 3 that NIP just can't really lose. 25 seconds here. Yugi goes down next. And Magus get a 1 versus 4. And again, if they fight him, that's kind of on them. They can just leave him alone. They are giving him a bit of a chance here. 17 seconds. He's going to try and put up a smoke and maybe fight a bit more. Surely planning inside will get him killed. And yeah, Hampus will find him. They could have played that even safer if they wanted to. But I guess a round is a round. Yeah, you can't you can't complain too much. What a flight from Rez. This is um I don't know. That that flank from Rez, the default spread from Astralis with no one doing a whole lot. I mean, that that's just that's just not enough eyeballs watching for that flank. And also, like if you're just going to spend most of the round not really doing much, we see it with other teams usually not for, not often, not really at all with Astralis. But eventually, the defense is going to go hunting for you, hunting for information. And Rez just found way more than he expected. Yeah, he definitely did. That's a huge kill. I mean, it was so far across the map. There wasn't anyone that could revenge it. No one that had trade res at all. So 
that's that's a strong just single individual play now they're gonna get their revenge this time though dupree pushed up by the e-box and helped out by device and a flashbang will take him down it's a fake though it's all on hampus now that one kill pulled all the defense out he's the only one still here at this inner bomb site and he's gonna try and push up along the smoke. No one's watching for this. Nobody's watching for it, but he can't stop the plant. One more through the smoke, he deals great damage to Yugi. Hampus has done as much as he possibly could. Yeah, even the Molotov there to actually limit their space, but now they're being flanked as they're trying to retake the bomb site. Snappy, a beautiful headshot to take down Nork and Plowski and Twist. I mean, I actually look like Hampus have done so much in this round, but I'm not sure it's gonna be quite enough. Yugi will land another one, and now Astralis at least Starting to warm up a little bit and get a couple of kills here. Twist just trying to hold the line. He's going to get the kill on Snappy, but he can't win the round. And he definitely knows it. He goes down. There was a the flank from Dupree. And a second round for Astralis, finally. Yeah, the open and the close from Dupree. And more importantly, that first kill causes the rotation. It pulls all the support of Hampus outside to the A bomb site. He had nobody to help him with. So well-crafted round from Astralis and a lot of success based off that initial kill. Even so... Their fortunate Hampus didn't get more climbing over the bomb train in that fashion. He very easily yeah. could have gotten a double kill out of that, even if the bomb was planted. And that would have been really hard to deal with. Eight to two, a six round lead for NIP, but they're running out of money. Astralis might have just done it. I was, uh, I mean, I was getting really worried about that myself. It, it re I thought actually he could see both the players over there, but he obviously didn't know where the bomb was being planted. But if he got both of them, that probably is going to be the round favoring uh, NIP all of a sudden. Still, it's a good lead. I mean, eight to two. I don't think they're going to be too unhappy about this uh, this current trend. Oh, still in the hands of Nork. They have spent all of their money though, so it could be a bit of a swing back here for uh, for the Danes. They need it. This T side is looking uh, pretty labored so far. They're going to need an economic advantage down the stretch to claw as many rounds as possible. This T side. Yeah. Here we go. You two. Smoke out. Four players outside for NIP to start with. The deep Molotov towards Ivy, but Device and Magus are going to mostly ignore it. And Dupree spots Plopsky. A little bit of damage exchange, but not too much. I'm surprised that Dupree is actually standing around in main like this. He, I mean, they have known for a while that Nork is really good with that open. He's down there somewhere. He's still going to win the fight against Plopsky. That's a great kill for Dupree. A lot of confidence in that play style. That's why he's sticking around. Yeah, perfect timing, just as Plopsky's clearing a corner. Rez gonna put out the Molotov, double nade. Thankfully, he wasn't pushed forward. And Twist might have a big role to play. The cover of the flashbang and smoke, they jump out towards the backside. There goes Knock, and now Twist is in an impossible scenario. It's him against the world in the outer bomb site. Dupree just doing such an incredible uh, amount of work out there. Triple for him in the round so far. Hampus trying to avoid the warpangs. And make an escape with that AK-47, which is probably all they'll have in the next round. So, I don't know. Slow start here for Astralis, but starting to show some signs of life. Dupree getting tired of getting beat up, I guess. Yeah, he's he's actually providing most a lot of the openings that they've that they've had in these past, you know, two, three rounds that they're able to win. He's actually starting to come online just a bit. Eight and nine for him. He's leading the way for his team. Next up is Device with six. And NIP, after such a good start to this half, after what, that seven to nothing run to start it? I mean, they're in danger of having this entire half just implode. Just by virtue of having no money to fight with. Yeah, and I'm when you, when you get this kind of a lead, right? You, this is how you don't want it to collapse. It's they've done a good job. Otherwise, they sort of you know they had that AWP on Nork, a bunch of rounds, they had a lot of luxury working in their favor, but it's it's got to come to an end well, here. He, and here's what you need to do: if you're if you're an IP, the next round that you have the full buy, that you have your weapons and your utility, you need to drop, you need to bomb that T mid with nades, with Molotov, with flashbang. And you need to neutralize anyone who's trying to get a pick there. Dupree has gotten that kill on Plopsky, close up in the Olaf position, and then he got one moving out towards E box. So if you can put a stop to that, at least you're not playing these rounds four on five. Hampus, unfortunately, that AK-47 falls the other side of the bomb train. That makes Rez very sad and very dead. Yeah, that's such a shame. Would have loved to have picked it up and continued the fight, but it is just not possible, as you could tell. Nork inside of the smoke for no more than a second. Good round. A lot of power there behind it. 
No one slowing down from Astralis. Eight to four. And as you said, now they've got the, some rifles again. They don't have that many grenades, but you're right. If they don't, if they don't put an end to that main play, maybe the priest is going to keep going. And I think potentially a bit of a tech timeout being called here by NIP. Yes, indeed. All right, so we'll get a slight pause in the action. Pretty, Im pretty impressive comeback uh, into this half from Astralis. At least they're making a challenge of it. Yeah, they definitely are. I mean, it, it's we were starting to get worried about the... Because the, the, the bar of expectations is set so high for Astralis, right? Empty. Yeah, it really is. It's almost an unfair comparison. <laughs> That's how it is. I mean, like, what? there's no way to, to avoid that, I think. That's... There is a, there's obviously a, a, a huge power to having the Astralis name like this, but it does carry with it a couple of consequences, and I, guess, I think this is just one of them. Um, so there's no avoiding that, I think. But if they can just, you know, I think if they could just not crash and burn, if they could just sort of have like a, a, a you know, a good medium performance here. Peel's there, all right, whatever, you know, but like we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Once Snappy and Yugi get put into play, maybe it, it can still still kind of work out. But I think if they just get completely crushed by NIP, then yeah, people will start to get nervous. So I like the recovery. Yeah, I mean, they're... I do too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like spend some time in reserve judgment. I mean, it's quite obvious this T side is is missing a little bit of that power that they had previously. There we go. That's NIP getting aggressive and just making sure that Dupree has no chance to provide an opening. Rez under some pressure, but he's gonna fall back. A retreating battle, and he's got backup from Hampus. They've dealt good damage to Yugi, and even Plopski taking some gunfire through the wall. They're gonna stay involved in the action. Yeah, still sticking around. That's kind of bold. Now, finally going to start to slowly back away from that device. Alone here with the AWP, what a way to do this. I mean, again, you're taking this part of the map on your own with a with a scope gun like this. If you miss a shot, you're done. Snappy is going to go down to Nork, and he will quickly smoke. Oh, actually, probably wanted to have that smoke stay there, <laughs> but fair enough. Yeah, I got a mind of its own, that little, that little sneaky guy. All right, two down ladder. Here comes the hit. Rez actually sinks back into the choke point. He's got to be careful. He can get blocked off by smoke or Molotov if he's way too committed to CT Con. Now he's going to step directly behind the smoke, finding a timing. Yugi, Molotov is out. Rez surely going to start wrapping around the smoke any second now. Yeah, he's really biding his time. He's waiting for it. Not even get that kill, but he would have had it either way. So it's still a pretty good play. A single kill for Rez, but very, very patient in the round. And nine to four. That's a team ace. All five members yeah. of NIP got one kill apiece, so well done from them. A five-round lead now. Money's still good for Astralis for these final two rounds, even in a loss. And there it is. I mean, that's kind of just what I mentioned. I, I said, dude, you know, use nades to neutralize Dupree. They just push up and take them out of the equation entirely. So that's a good start to the round for the ninjas. We'll see if they put that pressure on team mid one more time. 14th round here. Astralis... If they lose this round, they can still buy. They still have some, some money in the bank, so that's kind of good news. A little bit worse for an IP if they end up giving up this one, so... I think they just want to put Astralis away here. I mean, if they could finish 11-4, that would be, that'd be a huge lead going into the second half. Okay, well, there's a stack towards the inner bomb site. Three players, two on the lower ramp, and Rez was pushed upper. They're just breaking that because they hear no footsteps and no utility. This boost, that, ooh, Plopsky never expects it. What a good find, and I know that's turned you on. Oh, Jason, you have no idea how much. That's, um, <laughs> that's put a huge smile on my face. What a cool idea. Hampus goes down, knock, and twist in a two on five. They didn't do it exactly how I would have wanted to, but I'll take it anyway. I'm, I'm happy that they tried it. Yeah, they did it in a way that actually got them something, which is unique for your, your boost ideas. <laughs> it's because if, if you throw smoke from T-spawn that lands right in front of the box, it is impossible to see the, the, the head of the T's from the other side. Oh, no. That's that's giving away a little bit much. I don't think actually Twist is going to win the round, but yeah, you, you can actually make it like a pretty much an indestructible one-way kind of peak. Except, of course, if people just shoot there from, from habit, right? But um, but it is kind of disgusting. Still, that worked That worked pretty well. Good job. Yeah, magnificently, I would say. They actually did have that smoke in front of them. I didn't think, yeah. So they had the smoke in front as well. I'm so excited. <laughs> they had it all. They had it I've all. I've only tried Nine to, to convince people for three years. So. 
Well, I mean, it was a long payoff, but it but it seems like it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, uh, that was my investment three years ago, and now here we go. It's been used once. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Good pick from device. Dupree out mid again is going to find another entrance as well for Astralis, and he's going to build on it. Dupree has been a saving grace for this team in this half. And you know what? As much as we've criticized Astralis for what this DF has looked like, for how it's looked a little bit flat, a little bit unusual, Man, is it not just the most Astralis thing in the world to have a half that seemed flat and feels like it wasn't as impactful, but still put six rounds up on a T side of train? They started down zero to seven, and they closed this half on a six to two run. Yeah, that is a really good second half coming right your way. Astralis on the CT side now, six to nine. They wanted a six to two run to close that first half and looking to carry that momentum forward. And NIP gonna start this out with a B rush. Here we go, Device on the bomb train. Snappy's far back and it's all about to see what can Device get. Snappy's gonna have to fall away. Device is still so high up on top. He hasn't been found and now he's gonna stop the plant. How has NIP let this happen? Finally, the kill comes out from above, but the delay is massive. Oh, that could be a huge issue here. Finally, they're going to go through with it, and it's a two on three, but that could have been everything for Astralis right then and there. Dupree just falling off the ledge. They are still on Glocks mostly. Dupree with a nice headshot. I think this one to P250 there on Rez could be very, very dangerous up on the high ground. Uh, shooting from the ladder, never a good idea. Plopsky will take down Dupree. Excellent kill and make his gas. Oh, he wants to go for more, but Rez will take him down, and that will be the round in favor of NIP. Yeah, that P250 allowing Rez to hold that angle for the follow-up peak from Megus. And I cannot believe that device was just never spotted up top. That means that the player coming from upper ramp never even swung to look into the bomb site, never cleared anything. And when you look at how this actually worked, NIP pushed sidewalk. They didn't clear spindles. They didn't clear the other side of the bomb train. They didn't clear high train. There was a lot of danger for NIP in that round. And device almost pulled off something crazy. Yeah, as close as it can really get there. Not really quite true for the uh, for the odds actually favoring NIP versus Astralis. So that's interesting. Uh, not everyone would have necessarily expected that, but um, yeah, I mean, I guess given the current results, maybe it makes sense. Yeah, I think the, I think the roster change is going to cause a, a loss of confidence. That's a great HE grenade though, up above ladder room. A couple follow up ones to return the favor on Megisk. But yeah, the, the, the confidence drop in Astralis after changing out two players for this series or for this tournament. And I think also that first half, going down seven to nothing, had a lot of people worried in the Astralis comeback. Good opening pick for NIP. That's Dupree lured into action. Man, that was, uh, those grenades that they throw to, uh, to hit Plovsky and Rez are actually a lot harder than people think. Because there's like a vent up there that half the grenades you throw if you don't know what you're doing will just land on top of the vent, and that vent will absorb all of the damage. So, yeah, you have to actually know what you're doing. You can't just blindly toss them in. The, in the case you ever got the urge to in a in one of your own games, you gotta do the research. Oh, oh, more nade work from Astralis. Although it doesn't look like it's gonna matter a whole lot down the stretch, but they do have a couple players pretty low for devices scout. If he can just pick off one, I don't think Nock will show himself. He's in relative safety tucked into that corner. Snappy now pouncing up. Oh, he finds one. This is so scary. He's got a second. And Device can win this. A one versus two. That was a quick headshot. I mean, just jumping up. That was really well done. But he's looking the wrong way. Hard to do with the scout indeed. So an expensive round for NIP. They will still take it. And it's 11 to 6 now. And not enough money for Astralis to uh, to actually do anything. Dupree, though, with another taser. We've seen them bought, but not really seen them uh, do anything yet. No, we haven't really uh, gotten the, the fun with tasers that we like to see. You know why? It's it's because we don't have Tarek. When Tarek buys that taser, he, he really goes for it. You know, he doesn't just sit at a corner yeah. and wait for someone to come in. He actually attacks with that thing. That's a good point. I do miss Tarek for that reason, and amongst others. Oh, wow. Back with the grenades. Three in a row on Dupree's face. And that was too much. Yeah. He, he tapped two's, out. Two's manageable. Three is three's unreasonable. Yeah, he didn't want anything else uh, to do with it. The device is still on the taser, though. So we could still see it in action. He's got that towards the inner bomb site. You imagine he's going to push up close to the lower ramp with it just for a cheeky little kill. 
but NIP might not even end up there. At the moment, with the five on four, just waiting for any kind of push, any kind of reaction, waiting for the information play that's not coming. So now all that's left is for them to attack this bomb train. Away from the taser as well, so that's sad. Yeah, getting cheated all the time. It's nice in a round like this to have the MAC-10 and the, and the pistol on twist. Because you can, you can have them lead the charge into that site, not even worried about any stacks or anything. Now he's looking for an, for an exit taser. Which I guess that can also work. Second favorite kind of taser. Yeah, I mean, especially at the, at the ladder here, it's so funny when people climb up and then they <laughs> descend flying down again after having made that weird scream. Yeah, that weird, like, made to, made to sound like a squawking chicken. Ooh, didn't even get a chance. You really wanted to as well. But that's a shame. Not for NIP, though. All the way up at 12 rounds. Yeah, just four rounds away from closing out this map, from taking a nice, uh, nice clean victory here. All right, let's see. They've had good starts to both of their halves. Obviously, the first one was seven to nothing. Now three to nothing. First gun round in hand. Device has the AWP. So does Twist on the T side. Yeah, and that's interesting. See if we could uh, find an early kill here, Device. I think we saw the comeback at the beginning of the first half there for Astralis hanging on to it, but it will be Twist instead, beating Device to the punch and taking him down. And if they win this round in IP, surely it's their game. Surely they've got themselves uh, put in a nice position, enough to, to be able to take the victory. Yeah, they would have such a nice advantage. I can't believe Hampus is this close. Good find from Yugi up on top. And that was the only one who could have stopped that play from occurring. So Yugi finds the equalizer and can now take a deeper angle in towards team mid with that AWP. His biggest problem is the fact that he does not have any support or any kind of a teammate to keep an eye on Ivy behind him. So his attention is probably gonna be split between those two choke points. No one's cleared up Pop Dog yet, so Dupree's still hanging around in there. We'll see what they do if they actually go for this bomb site. If they can buy time and, and just make sure that no one pushes through fast enough, then maybe Dupree... Oh, he's already walking up behind them. This is exactly what Rez did to them, and now Dupree wants to do the exact same thing. Has he spotted out anyone yet? Oh, no, he's got his back turn. <gasps> Rez might see him. Oh, this could be a disaster. There is the turnaround in Dupree. He only gets oh. the one. I can't believe it. He had it lined up. That could have been the round one just then. It might be enough still just because of the confusion, but... Man, the timing is unbelievable. No, look outside. They're going to readjust. Nock has to make a play right now. He needs the skill. He needs it. He's got the headshot. Now he can hold Yugi back, at least for the moment. Yugi, low HP. Good job from Nock. He's allowed Twist to rotate back up. But look at the time. There's only 12 seconds. Twist has to make his play. Here comes a boost in towards CT choke point. He now knows the location of both. And Yugi can't fight. Yugi's got to back away. Wow. I, again, what a, what a dramatic round. It's because he was behind the wall, Dupree just didn't even see him. And then the quick trade, the quick turnaround, and as you pointed out, Norky had to win that fight, and he did. That is... That's heartbreaking for your Astralis. Are they rage buying into this round, Jason? Is that what's going on here? I don't know. Does Astralis rage anything? Do they rage do anything? I don't know. It's, old Astralis, definitely not, right? Maybe new Astralis. Uh, no, I mean, they, they've left themselves enough money with a losing bonus built up that they'll be able to buy in the next round. But, you know, snapping off a few pretty quickly, trying to do some kind of damage, maybe maybe get a Hail Mary in there. Plopsky knows the position of Vegas, and now he knows the position of Dupree. I'm a little bit shocked that the communication didn't come over to warn Dupree that Plopsky was in ladder room, crossed over. Yeah. Either way, Plopsky's going to start this round with two kills and a big advantage now for NIP. Yeah, it's looking so good, isn't it? About to be 14-6 with the money, with everything going in their way. The only thing that really could be potentially an issue, right, is the fact that they're on the T side. So if Astralis can turn it around, they can go on a pretty big run. Snappy, one versus five. Would love a gun, but they're unavailable, so he's going to have to take one if he wants it. That's not gonna Try it from his cold, dead hands. Exactly. Didn't didn't really turn out that way in the end. So that's a shame. But ultimately, now is the test. Maybe the last one that Astralis will have in this game. Double O. What do you what do you think of that solution? 
Uh, you, I mean, listen, at this point, 6-14, to 14, nothing else has worked so far. You haven't really had a whole lot of opportunities, and you don't really have a whole lot of chances left to kind of struggle, so why not go into a double op? There are no wrong rounds, this kind of mentality. Yeah, well, also, ooh, never mind. Hold the phone. Fast pace, good shot from Yugi. Even dodges the follow-up, gets a leg shot, but Plopsky wins the spam battle. Man, that was about to be really, really brilliant from Yugi. Dupree standing right underneath, dodging the grenade as Twist goes down to Magisk. So building a more reasonable start this time, Astralis. Device in a position to get a quick kickoff here, and he will. Rez goes down. Well, now they know that double orb is in play. We don't know yet if Astralis will be able to keep both of them, but at least NIP will have it probably in the back of their minds if enough Astralis members survive here. Oh, they're far back on B. Just allowing an IP to get the bomb plant if they want it. Well, we'll see if Device can hit the shot on the cross. He sees Plopsky up top. And there it is. Bomb on the ground. And it's even in a place that's very difficult for Nock to recover to even get a plant. So he's just got to try and find a kill or two right at the end. Device is creeping up. That's a great headshot, but no chance for a follow-up. And Astralis is still alive, still on the board, but the double up has been taken away from them. Only able to bring one of the AWPs forward into this round. Yeah, a bit of a shame. I mean, it's a, it's a sizable investment, and Yugi seems to be pretty... pretty explosive with that weapon right now. I'd love to see him back on it. Maybe not over the vice or anything like that, but it's fun when they both have one. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a powerful setup for this Astralis lineup, at least on the defensive side, uh, for some time to come. Nades out towards mid. No one peeking into it from the Ninja's side. Short pop flash. Dupree wins that battle as well. Flashbang doesn't even touch him. Man, Dupree is having himself an amazing game right now. Whatever comeback is in store right now, if, if, if any at all, a lot of it looks like it's going to be on the back of Dupree. Inside of B, two people further up this time. The grenade looks like it could be timed well enough at least to catch the AWPer back there. Rez has already spotted this out. Now backup should be called for. They must know that something is coming. That's the bomb down as Plopsky gets uh, dinged by the vice. And now it's a three on four. Twist is there with the op, though. Someone needs to get that bomb and plant it. Unfortunately for Twist, it's got to be him. He's got to give up his perch with the AWP at some point. Rez has pushed up to alleviate some of that pressure on the opper, but what kind of a play could he actually make? Smoke is going to clear pretty soon. And he's waiting for his moment to pounce. Twist providing support on the right side of this train. Yeah, this close position, if he can stay alive for more than a kill, it's going to be huge. There's one, taking down Magus now, it's just a question of seconds. Trying to stay alive and even getting more kills, but he can't. He runs out of bullets at the end. Twist almost with the double, he swings again. He's going to take down Yugi. A massive defense here with the afterplant. And now Device, he knows he can't do it. That is great for Twist. Might have just saved his team here. 15 rounds for an IP. Not just Twist, give a shout out to Nock, just throwing his flashbangs, helping his teammate that completely blinds Yugi trying to push up along the bomb train. That gave Twist the chance to miss a shot and come back for more. What great support provided by Nock. 15 to 7, and IP have eight chances to close out this map. Eight chances, yeah, that's, that's just a lot, isn't it? Even on the T side of train, hard to imagine that they can't find just even one of them. There's some good, good sniping coming out from Twist in that one. Yeah, you're right. The grenades as well, really helping out. And this, with a close spawn, just gonna get some fire at his feet. Well, and this is a much Ooh, better start. That's a good opening. Yeah, but unfortunately, without that double up, the question becomes: Can they still have success with just the single AWP? Plopsky looking for someone to push in towards ladder room. Four on five. NIP. So many chances, but at least in this one are going to have to struggle. One player towards IV, and they're looking for an equalizer. It was almost there. Yugi was so close to peeking right into Hampus. Some noise down at IV while the rest is setting up a couple of grenades, but it's all just for a fake right now. 
Gonna be throwing those grenades. Oh, more grenades landing on top of uh, Magus down there. He's gonna be annoyed at that. Hanfer's actually pushing in. And now this fate could work really well. Look at that. Three people out in the A yard. Only inside is Snappy. And just for a second, Rez takes him down. That is a magnificent job from Hampus doing that out there. Just the one kill is all they needed. I think they already know Dupree is flanking as well. Plopski gets yeah. a freebie. Dupree and a one versus three. And yeah, all eyes turn in this direction. He's got wow. no chance. 